Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. In this bass lesson, I've got 12 amazing bass riffs that I'm going to show you. Some are in a minor key, some are in a major key. But I'm going to show you loads of things along the way, but to show you that really they're all the same riff or the same notes are being used. Let's dive straight in. I'll show you exactly what I mean as we go. This is Yertle the Turtle by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now I'm going to play everything starting on a G in this entire lesson, even though the originals are in different keys. So G, B flat, C. Now that's actually the second riff that I'll show you now. That is the guitar riff, not the bass line, but the guitar riff of Smoke on the Water. If you play G, B flat, C, in that order you'll recognise those notes. If you add the fourth fret of the A string in, that's a D flat, you'll get the next bit of the riff. But there are also the notes in Yertle the Turtle. Now this lesson, sometimes I like to try and get thing, you know, points across really succinctly. There's just a lot that I'm teaching you in this lesson. Is this an intervals lesson? Is it scales? Is it learning riffs? Is it learning how to play fills, which I'll show you later? It's all of those things. Now since we're starting on G, that's the root. The B flat is a flat third. Now this is an interval. An interval is just simply the distance between two musical pitches. So if I start on a G, and just play the first three notes of a natural minor scale, we get the third note of a minor scale. We call it a minor third. Especially in rock music, it's a very important interval. This is part of the training, really. Learn the sound of the interval. If you have the, if you hold smoke on the water in your head and just be able to sing it, then you go from the first note to the second note. That's the sound of a flat third or a minor third. That means the same thing. Now that note is a perfect fourth or just a fourth. Really, really great notes for rock riffs. Let's move on. Le Freak. This is an A minor, but again, I'm playing everything in G in this case. Again, same notes. We've got Gs, B flats and Cs. I'll, I'll slow this one down. And actually, because I've done it in G, I can't quite play exactly the original. I'll adapt it. Okay, we need F to join the party here. G is the root. That F is a minor seventh or flat seventh. You need to play it up here. So you've got G down here on the third fret of the E string and F on the third fret of the D string. Even playing that, that reminds me of a Royal Blood bass line and also the beginning of another Chili Peppers line. And this is the point. If you learn these intervals and the scales that are sort of underneath them, I'll talk about that as I go, learning songs becomes a bit easier because you realise that all of these different bass lines hold or play the same notes, the same intervals. Okay, yes, maybe it's in different keys, but it's still the same principle. And on a bass, it'll be the same pattern. So that one is a flat seven or minor seven. Put that F down the octave. You also see that that very same note is two frets lower than your root note. So okay, they're not the same speed, but you can see that all of those notes work. Travelling Without Moving, a brilliant Jamiroquai song. That's in E minor. I'll stick to this. That does that a lot. So, if I just go back down here, we've got F, G, B flat. All the same notes in those other riffs. Played slightly faster now. When you analyse lots and lots and lots of bass riffs, which I think you should do, you will come up with to this conclusion. 
that a lot of them are doing the same things. I think that really helps learning songs. It really helps your ear as well, because the flip side of this is yes, let's let's learn songs and as many as we can learn bass lines, but also like what happens if someone's playing like a, a G minor chord in some sort of funk thing and you have to play a bass line where all these notes fit over it. That is a minor pentatonic scale, which contains all these notes I've just taught you so far, like a G, B flat, C, F, as well as a couple of others. Not a couple of others, just D actually. So you definitely need to know that scale, but you also need to know the intervals within it, you know, octave, flat seven, a fourth and a fifth, that's a flat third, and learn the sound of it. So that when you hear something in your head, containing these notes, you can replicate it immediately. Last one I've got here is Collision by Faith No More, just a really angry, brilliant rock riff. Same notes, G, F, G, B flat. Now the original's in D minor, so you would just move it to a D. I think it's down the octave. Either tuned down bass or a five string, not quite sure. And then the bit, the chorus bit, the collision bit. Now that's the note. That's that flat five. It's a very angry, rocky, dark sounding interval. And you hear that a lot. And you hear that in this bass line. Otherwise, So, you know, sometimes with these lessons, I have an absolute clear plan. With this one, there's quite a lot to teach, but I hope you can see that right now, that just those few notes give you all of these different amazing songs. Obviously, sometimes the tempo is different and we're changing key, but otherwise, there you go. That was all minor. Let me switch to major now. I'll do it again on the G. So, I mean, that's what it means to be major. That's a major scale, right? G major as opposed to G natural minor for the minor keys. I will just quick, I'll stop here a second. Because that was G natural minor, those, all those notes fit if you're in a minor key, but actually a couple of those were using something slightly different. A G Dorian mode, that all funk stuff uses that, so. That's Dorian rather than natural minor. They contain the same notes apart from the sixth. I'm not going to go too much into that, but if you are interested in funk music and just getting your theory down a bit, definitely learn your natural minor scale. Definitely learn your Dorian mode. They're really great. Let's go back to major. Hey Ya by Outcast, which actually is in this key G. Now here's another thing I wanted to get into in this lesson. The bass line isn't exactly that, but it's something like that. So we've got G major here. I love to play the G major scale just on two strings. Actually just up to there, sometimes even just three notes per string, so like G, A, B. Fret three, five, seven on the E. And then three, five, seven on the A to get C, D, E. Because a lot of the root movement of songs, you just play the root note, the piano or guitar playing the chords, and you can really see there's the one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see and hear where the notes are. So in the key of G major. So let's say you are playing this song. Uh, maybe there's a vamp going on, just going round and round a bit, and you're like, oh, I want to do a fill here. What do you do? Well, you can go. Now that was G major pentatonic, that's what fits to G major. 
like the minor pentatonic, fit to the minor key, major pentatonic will fit to the major. It's just a great fallback option, not even a fallback option. There's just so many great bass fills use pentatonic, so let's let's do it ourselves. That's just the pentatonic scale. Just playing it like that sounds cool. G A B and then D E. You can do the same pattern starting on this G. And all I'm doing here is slides, vibrato. It's what brings bass playing to life, I think. I'm going to move to another one, A, B, C. Another one that's using the major scale, that's actually an A flat. If you know the scale, going from the lowest note to the highest note, like that. Yeah, that's what most people do when they practice scales. But you really need to link it to songs and then you realise, oh, well, that's how scales are used. Mr. Brightside. G, F sharp, C. I think it's an F sharp over a D chord, but the notes regardless are in this key. I want to show you this bit there. You know the bit that goes? It's a really great bass line, that, very melodic. So if we're in the key of G and it's not in that, in the original key, it's D flat, but it goes to the sixth chord. So I like that thing of spreading your notes out on the E and the A string, three on the E, three on the A. You can clearly see the, the sixth chord there. Forget the fancy stuff first. That bit. It goes to the five, the D. To the C. Very simple chord progression here. So we've got the E minor, D to C, and we're playing root notes. But all of this fancy stuff, it's just notes that come from the original key or in G major. That's a really good bass line to show you that you can get really simple root notes and then play melodies around it using notes from the key. And then you can, when we get to the chorus, it's this. So G, fifth fret, D string. You can't play along to the original like this because it's in a different key, so you'd have to transpose it. Very easy to do. G, C, E, D. It's like one, sorry, one, four, six, five chord progression. Let's say you were doing that and you wanted to embellish a little bit. You're playing live. I'm just using the bass player's high tier, actually. I'm just using notes from the key or the scale. And that's just pentatonics again. G, major pentatonic, or E minor pentatonic. They're related keys there. They have the same notes in them. So again, same kind of thing. What else have we got here? That's brown eyed girl, which is in G. I really like bass lines like this that show you that it's that scale. When I got the link between scales and bass lines, a light bulb moment went off for me. And then when I had to learn, you know, 10 songs that were in a major key, yes, they were probably in different keys, but the notes and the intervals I was using were exactly the same. So make sure you know your scales up and down, but also train yourself to hear different intervals. An octave is, you know, my Sharona. 
It's also in traveling without moving, any disco funky stuff you hear octaves a lot. Train yourself to hear those intervals and then you can identify them really quickly and hear a bass line and go, oh, that's an octave or a fifth. Sitting on the dock of the bay. The reverse of that, my girl. Can you feel it? You can just do like literally one band worth of different bass lines using one interval. And speaking of Jackson 5, another one. Yeah, they're all using the same notes. Lovely Day by Bill Withers. Now I've just semi-randomly, but I like these songs anyway, chosen these. But really, so many, certainly pop music, will conform to this idea of either being in a major key or a minor key, maybe in one song you might have both going on at the same time. Jazz, fusion, you know, progressive rock, styles like that probably aren't going to be as simple as I'm showing you now, but the principles are the same. There'll be scales and intervals going on. Whilst being quite a short lesson, there's actually a lot in there to digest. From learning the intervals to shapes, you know, transposition is easy. So Yertle the Turtle, the very first riff. Did that in G minor, but it's actually in D minor. Very easy, you find a D, fifth fret, A string. And the exact same patterns and distances between the frets exist and you're now playing in D minor. You'll see that transposition is really easy on a bass because you can just use patterns. I'll put a link below to a blog post that contains all of those songs. Why don't you listen to them and try and work out what key they are actually in. Some will be, as I taught, some will be slightly different. And then just see for yourself that actually you can just move around some of those patterns I showed you. And hopefully that will make learning bass lines really easy, but then coming up with your own thing really easy as well, because you can base your own lines or your own improvisations around some of these things, you know. How many times do you have to listen to that great bass line to realize that all those notes, you know, let's rock it up a bit. That works over a minor, and then you can start writing your own stuff as well and hear it in your head and play it instantly. Like I said, there's a lot here. You may need to rewind. You may need to go through it again, but I do hope that you at least got something from that. If you did, please give the video a like, a thumbs up, that, that helps things ticking over. And as ever, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, see you next time.